So welcome to another board game review from theplayersaid.com. My name is Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a not war game, kind of. <laughs> so this is, It's a fun game, though. It's definitely a board game. So this is Charioteer, Race for Glory in Ancient Rome uh, from GMT Games. This is a relatively new game uh, designed by Matt Calkins. Mm -hmm. And this plays from like two to six players, and it is chariots racing in ancient Rome. It is not it's more exact, than that. It's exactly what you would expect <laughs> yes. from that. And we've played at least a couple of other charioteer-style yes. games. And and a couple of other just kind of generic regular race games. But, yeah. uh, you know, who doesn't love chariot racing, right? You think about the scenes from, is it Ben-Hur? <laughs> yep. Right? Like classic stuff like that. So games like this always go down a treat. I want you to tell me the name of Ben-Hur's main enemy in that one. Do you know? I have, have you ever watched Ben Hur? I have I've watched okay. it once a very long time ago. Masala. I would I didn't I would never yeah. have known that. That's a great movie. Yes. But it, it's it, so so Charity, the multiplayer racing game. Mm -hmm. And in this one it is a kind of a, a card playing mechanic. You have a hand of cards and you're gonna play those cards and it is uh, like symbol slash color matching with some arithmetic on the end of it based on certain modifiers you might be getting and the numbers of the cards. And then that's going to propel you forward a certain amount of spaces. Yep. And those different colors slash symbols also correspond to the different kind of types of moves that you're doing. So there's kind of like sprinting, which is just like racing forwards. There's like a, a curving cornering. or a turning. Yeah, cornering, that's what they call it, mechanic. Uh, there's like a, like a, not a healing, what do they call that? Like a repairing, recovery, recovery type it's thing. Where you... I think it's on the back of this. I was just looking at the cards. Oh yeah, probably. There it is. There, yeah, there you go. Is. Yeah, recovery. So you're, you're trying to get back some of the damage or the kind of fatigue that you've been doing. Maybe move it slower. And, and I think it's also potentially some minor repairs to your chariot as well. Yeah. As you, you know, as you kind of get bumped in, you know, maybe you can you know, hit something in and it sticks. Yeah, or, fix, it, that, that's kind of the fix, concept. Fix it's the not range just or wounds. Yeah. And then, there's, and, and then there's attacking, which is doing damage Ooh, to, it's, to... It's fun. And, and the best part about this game, <laughs> unlike a lot of other race games and other chariot games where you do damage to a player, you do damage to all, all the players. players. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. An, it's a bit more of an abstraction, I, but it, it's fun. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting abstraction because you would really be targeting someone that's nearby you or an, in front of you but sometimes your actions in an attack like that might cause others to have to slow down or take damage. So it's it's an interesting way to deal with it, yeah. but it makes it very playable. Well, and the rules are like, hey, if this doesn't represent one attack with like a spear trying to get in someone's wheel yeah. or a whip, you know, it also represents like the crowd throwing stuff Garbage, at you, distracting yeah. you and like messing right. you up, like it, a whole bunch of stuff. The, the way I feel about that, because us as war gamers, it, it is nothing for me to say, I'm attacking you, right? I'm I'm coming after you. Oh yeah, we don't, we don't. A lot of Euro gamers though, don't like that concept. So yes. the attack is more, oh, everybody takes damage. It's less mean spirited because it, it yeah, affects it's, everyone. You're not right? targeting someone. But like, you but it still affects everybody. I mean, it affects everybody. The the thing I do like, uh, do really like about that attack mechanic is there are cards and different things that can save you from taking that yes, damage. Yes. I think that were they shields. So yeah, there are shields, like little shield symbols that you yep. can either have on some of the tokens that you draw from the bag, or some of the cards have it on there. Yeah, yeah. And if you have played one of any one of those this turn you then are immune to damage. Is that the sh Was that the shield token? I'm just trying to remember. Uh, no. No, I think it's an actual shield. We played this like a month ago. Um, keep keep talking. It could be. I think it is that. It could well be that one. That's no, the, whip. The, the whip. The whip. That's pretty cool. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, so a shield. It's, yeah, it's just it, a it's symbol. It's that symbol at the very top. That just means when you play that in connection with the cards that you're yes. playing, it just says, oh, I'm not going to take any damage this round. So you you really want to prioritize those. Also, if you do the recovery, you perform the recovery, then you are then immune to damage the rest of that turn as yeah. well. That's, that's yeah. kind of one of the advantages of that. So if you think people are coming for a big one, you can, and you can predict it. If yeah, no it, one's played any attacks for a while, they've got them all in their hands. Well, and, and also you can predict it because in front of you, kind of the emperor's preferred whatever tactics. Yeah, the little, the little emperor die. There's, there's a little, there's a couple of cards and then you got the emperor's die. 
And if there are a lot of red on those cards upcoming, more often than not, people are going to match those, yes, right? You're because you're trying to so. match either or because that benefits you. So you can see that coming. When there's not red on there, doesn't mean someone won't attack you. But you can but be you can, better prepared. Yeah, because if you see a lot of sprint or a lot of cornering on cards laying there, people are going to generally be trying to match sprint and cornering to increase their movement, increase yeah. their utility from that. I actually kind of enjoyed that because it... To me, once again, an abstraction, yeah. I know when another chariot's nearby me. I know when a guy's got his spear and he's looking to attack me. So I thought that was an interesting way to kind of abstractly deal with that so you can prepare well, a little bit. It yeah, was interesting. And, and it also, because you have your little hand of seven or eight cards. It was seven cards. Seven. Well, we played three players, so I think we does it go it. down when you do like six player? I don't think so. Okay. I don't remember. But it was like seven cards, and you could play no more than four, three. Three from your hand. Yeah. But, and so you're playing those to, to match all the symbols. So this is two green and one yellow. Uh, so if you're trying to stack a bunch of green cards, you can, okay, I'm going to play two of these. And it's really simple. You just have, how many symbols do I have? Four. And I think, is it? Your largest number that's printed on the card. Yes. So in this case, it would be a two. two. So four plus two. And then what other symbols appear on the card you're matching? Yes. Or you sometimes have the little uh, benefit all, cubes. All these little tokens, and you have a set of them to start with that yep. are yours. But then there's also like you're the, pulling the crowd out. tokens that if you do well, then you're going to pull extra ones, and he has all sorts of cool capabilities yeah. on as well. So, so it's, it's pretty interesting. You're trying to match the cards in your hand with what's going on and the resources you have. To me, it kept me engaged, but it was nothing over the top that made me blow my mind, right? I felt like we could play yeah. pr a pretty fun, light game, have a good time, yet there was some definite strategy there. And 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 it is like, if the actual rules, three pages of rules. Yeah. Like, it, it is so not, quick to learn and play. That yeah. was the, the joy of it, is it didn't, get, this game did not get in its own way. Like... We've got uh, Thunder Rally. I love that game. Oh, it's a fantastic game, but there's a lot of... It's it's a bit more yeah. complicated. The, the Which cards you play, and there's all these quite complicated movement rules that are very NASCAR, like it's great for mm -hmm. that. But there's a lot of crunch and the different types of damage that you take, and yeah. all these things going on. Uh, this is m like really much lighter than that, but you still get the great race feel in it. Mm -hmm. But the depth of those rules for... That game, Thunder Alley, it's what makes that game. Yeah, right? it, it works. This game, you could have done that. You know, Matt could have made it a lot more complex, but it would have been made for a different audience. Yeah. This really was made as a broad reaching, a high appealing game to most all like, gamers. If you and it was fun. If you've got a big family, you can sit down with six people and literally yep. everyone can play this. It's really, really not complicated. And, and I would imagine the fun had by those six people would be significant. Yes. Because the three of us, we had a good time with it. Yes. We initially had planned to do a four-player game, but our one player canceled, which is not uncommon in the board gaming world. Yeah, we've all had that. Um, but it was it was very cool. So I, I had a good time with this game. It was enjoyable. Would love to play it again. To me, you take this to a convention. Yeah. Because the game's played in like... 40 minutes, right? It, yeah, it or like if you max out the play, Maybe an hour. An hour, hour and a bit. Yeah. But like, you kind of, you all play and it's, everything's going on and the, I feel like the pace of the game is reasonably quick, all things considered. Well, the downtime is not necessarily in making your decisions because everybody's making those decisions simultaneously at the beginning of the round. Yeah. The downtime is... Oh, you're the first player, we go through your movement. And then the second player. So there's a little bit of downtime, but it actually, once you get the hang of it, it yeah. it's just counting spaces. It's Yeah, that, it's like, it. my cards allow me 12 movement. One, two, three, four, five, around yeah. 12. And you do that for four other people, then it's yep. your turn again. Like, it's not It's, it's not, not overly complex. complex. The, the cool thing that added some complexity to those movement rules were the concept of, okay, you're ahead of me. When I move into your space... It's considered that I'm on the outside of you, yeah. right? So it it takes an extra move to kind of get yeah. around you, and then I finish my move. The other interesting thing is when you're going around the corners, which are the black cards, 
if you're not using using corner cornering moves, you're you're counting like it, double spaces. It literally takes you twice as long, and, and it's it, crushingly well, painful. And, and you have to plan for that. And I really liked that. It was interesting because I had some couple of times I had cards. I'm like, hey, I'm ne nearing that cornering. I, I got to hold on to these. Or, oh, I collected a couple of these uh, favor tokens that I'm going to slap down and I'm going to gain an extra five movement. And I liked that, right? So I had to use, I actually used, I think, every single type of movement yes. multiple times during the game. Not just because that's what came out in the cards, but because it was it was what made sense yeah, at the moment. Some of it is planning and being doing the opportune thing. Some of mm -hmm. it, I felt like a couple times it was like, okay, I'm like, I did a big sprint and I did a big corner. Now my hand happens to be all yellow. Yep. I'll do a big recovery. Yeah. But a lot of it is like, and you're still moving with the recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but like the game has a nice flow and yeah. almost through your card play will show you everything that it offers whilst being just like fun and yeah. light and really enjoyable. I, I, there was nothing about the game that I didn't think was interesting, somewhat unique for this type of a racing game and, and fun. Yes. I just had a good time. I'll show you how this works real quick and then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Uh, map board. Uh, so it's these two small boards put together so it's going to quite fit on the camera uh, with the usual set because it's kind of a long and thin board. It's not 22 by 34. But uh, if you've played any kind of chariot racing games you will recognize the Circus Maximus or whatever this particular um, arena is called. Um, so you have the board is divided up into these spaces. You're going to count and move that many spaces based on your cards that you play. Um, around the corners, it looks like a piano. Um, to simulate the difficulty of moving around corners, it's kind of double moves like this, um, unless you play a special cornering maneuver, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, and when you're overtaking people, you have to move past them. That's one of your moves uh, as well. The very first turn of the game, you don't have to do that, but every subsequent turn, uh, this guy moves seven spaces on his turn. If I have seven spaces, one, two, three, four, five, or six spaces, I go on the outside, and the person on the inside of the track is technically ahead. Um, I have to have... In, but I can't just go like this to go ahead. I have to go like this and then this. So it's, it's an extra movement to skip someone. And when there's five or six people, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and skipping, 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 if you get some big numbers, you can skip a lot of people, but you can't quite make it as far. It's that difficulty of actually maneuvering around someone. Um, but that's that's really kind of, the, the track is very simple in that way. Uh, we have these crowd cards. The crowd card in the one slot, so closest to this edge of the board, um, this is the one that's currently in play. These are just for visibility, so you could kind of try to help predict what's coming up. Uh, and the game is basically played uh, with a hand of eight cards. Uh, and you have to match symbols. Oh, that's a really bad hand. <laughs> oh no, uh, they also have a pretty bad hand. Well, I might have to fish through the cards and get some. So when I play my hand of cards, you can play anywhere from one to three cards, and I select the cards that I'm gonna play, and I place them face down, and then I also have this little bank of tokens, and everyone starts with the same five tokens, but there's more that can come into the game. I could secretly choose one of these to add, and it's gonna be a modifier to what I have. So let's say that's what's, and I'll reveal these and kind of show you what they all do here in a second. Uh, that's what their hand is gonna be. Um, and then we're also going to play for these guys. They're gonna play this one and this one. And let's say they'll also do this one as well. And here, we're going to switch it. Well, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So that's what they're, they're only playing two cards a piece, and that's because they have bad uh, hands, and I'll kind of show you why. Uh, the other thing we're going to do, we should have done this before, is you roll this Emperor die. And we're going to roll it in our uh, awesome skull uh, dice tower. If you're playing a uh, one to four player game, when you roll this symbol, everyone takes a damage. Uh, you take a blue cube, it goes into one of your three damage boxes. You can at most take three damage in a given turn. 
um, that would suck if you get that. Uh, but if you play five or six players, because there's so much going on, um, and other people do lots of attacking, you don't need the extra damage. Um, this die, basically, if, if it's on green and you play green symbols, the Emperor likes that. This is what he wants to see. He wants to see people going fast. Um, your, your skills will increase at a faster rate uh, if you match whatever's on the die, regardless of if it matches the crowd card. If you match what the Emperor wants, you're good to go. If you can line up this and this, there's what it means is you're going to have a greater capacity to move and you're going to get rewarded for it. But if it's yellow and you play yellow symbols, your yellow one is going to go up twice instead of one as the skill. There's a black corner for cornering, red for damaging, this is wild, anything goes, and then again the damaging one which only affects um, smaller games. Um, so let's just... Uh, yeah, let's give us, oh, let's say it was green. Let's get rid of the damage here. We don't need to mess around with that at the moment. Um, first turn, your starting pole positions are uh, done randomly. So we just did this. Uh, and everyone reveals, uh, and you go and kind of in, in turn order of who's the furthest ahead. And that will continue for the rest of the game. Uh, whoever's furthest goes first, and you just go back in the line. Uh, so people have a chance to kind of catch up. Um, there's some mechanics for that. So... Uh, blue goes first, because they're on the inside of the track. And how we calculate movement is we look at the symbols and the numbers to see if we match. So we're trying to match our green symbols, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six green symbols that have a number six in them. So I've got six symbols, and you add to it the number value of six, um, and so we have 12 movement. We also played a plus five, so I've got 17 movement. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Great. Real simple. Um, because I matched 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 symbols, as a reward for that, I will go into the crowd bag. If you match six or more symbols, the crowd absolutely love it, and you draw another token. And the tokens go in here and they augment your pool of kind of standard starting player tokens. And you keep these secret, right? You keep them hidden from everyone else so they don't know what you've got. Um, and there's a massive bag of these. And uh, you want to try to get as many of those as possible. Um, you can only use one a turn, but having one every turn is very, very strong. So having completed Blue's move, uh, this goes back in the box. That's done with. These two cards get discarded. You used to have a little discard pile over here. Uh, and then because I used green, my green skill goes up one space, and because it matches the Emperor die, it goes up a second space. Now I'm in this one box. On every subsequent turn, if I ever do a green move, I will get plus one to that green move. So I would have had 18 moves instead of 17. This is going to go up and up and up and up as I continue to use green. At some point, it might move into this box, at which point it can't move any further, uh, you don't go up this line, but you get plus three. The next skill to get in there, if you get another one in there, goes into the plus five box. So if you can get these skills in there, you start getting bonuses, and usually you're gonna have those bonuses probably for the last lap only, because it's <laughs> you wanna do lots of different types of maneuvers, so these kind of go up a bit, and maybe one of them goes up into there. I've never seen someone have all four. I've only ever seen two at most, I think. You don't get any points for that, but it's going to help you to try to win the game by having these inherent bonuses. Every time you play green, you're going to have a plus three. Every time you play yellow, it's going to be plus five. That's really, really, really strong. And you, you're going to add that on top of everything that you've got. Uh, but that's the end of Blue's move. Uh, then we resolve pink, because they're behind. Uh, so they don't have as many symbols. They have one, two, three, four. Plus six is ten. Plus five is fifteen. So we only had fifteen matching symbols. Uh, which isn't quite as good. No, they were down here. Let's do this. That was there. So they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it looks like they're right behind each other. But remember, this is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to get ahead, right? So d don't let the optics fool you. But once again, um, this goes into the box. We're done with that. These two cards get discarded. We didn't match six symbols. So we don't get to draw a crowd token. But because the Emperor wanted green and we played green, we will also go up not just the normal one, but also another one. Uh, that's, a t that's a turn. But now imagine if there's six people playing, there's six people resolving that, and all sorts of different things are going to happen. Um, for example, you might play 
um, for example, uh, corners. You wouldn't want to play corners unless you're trying to corner. But uh, So this would get discarded at the end of the turn, these move down, we've got this one. So let's say we did that. Well this player now might say, well I've got a corner one, and I've got these two in my hand. Let's see, do I have any others? Not that are helpful. Uh, let's do pink, so that's we'll do those. And let's say the blue player, they're gonna, you fill your hand up to eight cards every time. Um, they can't corner quite as well because they did not get a lot of matching symbols. So might they try to do something else? Yeah. So they're gonna do this. Just so we can see what that looks like. We're gonna roll the die for the next turn. Oh no, we all take one damage. Again, in the larger games that doesn't happen. And now we also can't match with that. So uh, we're gonna be less good here. We're gonna do this as well. Great. Uh, they're not gonna play a token this turn. Yeah, no, they're not because of a card that they played and I'll show you why. So he, now, we, we go in kind of order. Again, if there's like five or six people, you're gonna play all of those guys. So the damage that we took happens at the beginning of the turn. At the end of the turn, this will go into our damage boxes and it will reduce, it's a movement penalty. Each blue cube is negative one to your movement. But because these went here at the beginning of the turn, they don't move down until the end of the turn. So this is happening, happening to us now, basically, and we uh, suffer the penalties later. So blue is going to go first because they're ahead. Uh, we could have moved one, two, three spaces on the corner. That would go one, two, three. That's not great. Uh, but they had a bad hand, so they went with these four yellows. So they went one, two, three, four, five. We don't match here because it's not the same number. One, two, three, four, five, plus the value four is nine, plus a you know, one-time token of a plus five. So we've got 14 moves. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Sometimes your hand is, you know, maybe not as good, so you can't corner as easily in that. So that's done with there. Um, we're gonna discard that. We didn't match five, six symbols, so these are just gonna get discarded. Normally, if you have damage in your damage box and you play yellow, you will heal half of that damage rounded up uh, and then move. So w we would have taken a negative three penalty, so we would have moved 11 instead of 14, but you clean off two, so we would have only taken a negative one penalty, so we'd have moved 13. Um, so yellow is a, is a healing capacity, it's very good. But at the, at the beginning, when we, at the beginning of the turn, we didn't have any damage in the damage boxes, so we didn't need to worry about that. Uh, so we do, however, because we played yellow, we go up one in the yellow. Now, the other player played uh, these cornering cards. So here we have one, two, three, four, five symbols that have ones in them, and we add the one, so we've got six corner moves. So we're gonna move six, and when you corner, you ignore these outside uh, spaces. So we just go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's really nice. They also played a whip. Um, you do all your regular moves, then you do your whip movement. And your whip movement is plus five movement of the type that you're doing. And, uh, however, you can't ever overtake someone with it. So we could go one, two, three, but we, you can't go past someone with a whip, so the last two are kind of wasted. But we caught up, that was really nice. So that's the power of cornering and the power of whips, able to kind of, if you can time those well, um, you can uh, really catch up to people. At the end of the turn, we're gonna refill our hands. So here, something like this. This gets discarded, these move down. The damage that's in one of these three damage boxes then goes into our actual damage boxes. And from now on, here, let me move this up one because we did cornering. Um, I always forget to move my skills. So just know that that's something you have to try to remember. Um, from now on, we're gonna take a minus one penalty until we fix this. Um, if you can play a card that has this plus symbol on it, that will give you the healing ability that you would play if you played a yellow card. So if you play a whole bunch of these uh, ones and you move on the red, you still get the yellow healing ability from this. But if you were to play a bunch of yellows and you could play one of these, 
you get double, you heal everything instead of half, which is really nice. It's kind of rare. Um, when you play a lot of these red ones, so here, let me get an example of these. So red, if we play red, I've got one, two, three, four, five, oh, can't play those, those don't match numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six red symbols, plus three is nine. I'm gonna move nine spaces, but because I have three matching red cards, every other player will also take one damage as well. Um, if you can match four cards, which, <laughs> so if I'm able to play this as well, I've got three, one, two, three, four cards with matching red threes on them, everyone else takes two damage. Uh, and the, you can only take a maximum of three in a round, but all of a sudden, um, next turn, if you get attacked a couple times, especially when you have matching red here, or if you have red here, or both, everyone's going to be attacking everyone, basically. Um, and so all of a sudden, you've now got four damage, and your really big moves, or your moves around corners, now suck. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so there's a lot to consider in that. Uh, but really, you can only play the cards out of your hand, so sometimes you just got to uh, lump it, basically. I think the only other special symbol that we have here is this one. Uh, and this is like a little shield. Uh, it blocks and prevents you from taking any damage uh, whatsoever in a turn. So if you know that there's red down here or there's red on the dice and you have this in your hand, and you might, you might be like, okay, I'm going to take a worse turn by playing these like little green twos. I might move less, but I'm going to prevent, you know, a maximum of three damage being done to me. Everyone else is going to take that. And then in subsequent turns, I'm going to come out ahead of all that stuff. Uh, I think the last thing is if things get really, really, really hairy, uh, like you've taken a bunch of damage in a, in a few rounds and you end up looking like this, you can always just do a reset move where you just play whatever cards you want to play. And then you just say, I'm throwing these away, I'm not moving at all, and I clear all of my damage. It's just, it's kind of like a pit stop, but you just kind of sit there and, you know, sort yourself out, calm your horses down. That's, and, and I've seen it done a couple times, and it can be very effective, uh, but, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're maybe in the lead or near the front of the pack when you do that to give you a chance to give yourself a chance to kind of get back into it. If you're last place and you're doing that, you're going to hurt yourself even more. <laughs> Unless everyone else is really damaged. So there's there's a little bits and pieces to consider, but you're going to go around, you can do one lap, you're going to do two laps, you're going to do a third lap, round and round and round. Um, and uh, I've played with six players a couple times. I know I shot this a lot later than we did the review. Uh, and it's equally as fun at six players as well. Uh, it's actually a riot, and I kind of prefer it at higher numbers, uh, just because you, it, it, a bit more chaotic, a bit more people, just, you know, beer and pretzels, having fun. But that's really how the game works. It's just not complicated. It is matching symbols. Sometimes you get terrible hands, and there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes you have really good hands, and you can, like, really make some uh, waves. But it's, it's a light, fun game, not complicated, perfect for a con or a party night. So uh, what we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map and the game. Not complicated. No, not complex at all. You can see Matt Calkin's kind of style in the game, though, right? Sekigahara is kind of his big block-style Sengoku yes. Jidai war game. We've played that a couple of times. We've loved it. Yeah, very very cool interesting. There's a lot of matching of symbols. You know, you've got your different units and your different clans and... And you've got to play those suits to match those units to do what you need to do. That, that's the way this is. They just, the symbols look different. There's some numbers thrown in. It, I, very unique, I think, a unique way to do it. And frankly, these cards, I thought it worked really well. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that there was kind of a little river of the crowd cards so yep. that you could match off of those with what you had in your hand. So you were never totally hosed. Yep. And then, like, there was also the Emperor die, so you were incentivized if you could match either one or both of those if mm -hmm. things were going well. You could do some really cool stuff. Your skills go up, and then your bonuses go up. Yep. And then all of a sudden, like, the, the end of the race is kind of like, okay, like, I've got some pretty powerful cards and some powerful yeah. skills. We can make a real big run for it. And that can you pull out that end. player board? That, I, I think the skills are a really nice touch to the game. I didn't like these play mats. I thought, wow. That's fair. That's I, I fair. thought these were very, very chintzy. But here's a, here's a look at 
you know, one of the player boards. And you'll notice there are your skills kind of up here and you're going to have these pawns. I think you have little colored yeah, the whole, pawns whole that match. And you're gonna move these up and out depending on how many times you use those symbols to match and they match the emperor die. I think when you match the emperor die, you get to move two your times skill goes up an extra rather space, than just yeah. one. And ultimately you're trying to get your skills over here kind of to the end uh, end zone, right? Yeah. You're gonna score a touchdown by- And you get permanent yeah. bonuses to that skill. So your first skill uh, get, gets the plus gets three. The three yeah. So you, you really gotta play this well because you're kind of planning multiple moves ahead but you, you also want to get as many of them over there as you can so that when you use those abilities, they're, yes. they're better. I, I'm trying to think we did not do a great job, no. in my opinion, of really maximizing I, the skills. I think each one of us only had one in there at yeah. the end, probably. Whereas I'm, I'm sure we could have done some things differently to better maximize that. But getting some of these over to these plus five and plus seven, my goodness, you would literally be crushing it. Yes, it, it makes if, a big difference. Big, so big so difference. I, I liked that it was it was a different kind of level to the game. It, it Without added, being complicated. No, it, it was not. I remember when we first looked at it, we're like, oh, crap. How, how does this work? It doesn't make sense, but it's very simple. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought those were very well done. I also thought it was very cool that the different uh, characters have different setup. Options yeah, you, for which you, skills are you better. have your little deck of cards for your skill deck, and it, so everyone start differently. Yeah, and that's important because th you know they move kind of like your chariots, where they have to overtake each other yeah. as you move along. So kind of like if you've got your attack at the top, it's it's effectively starts closer to the end zone. Yeah. So it's easier to get the big bonus and, on that. Yeah, and I just really like the skills. I thought it was really cool. The other thing I thought was great about this game, the board is what you would think it is, right? It's yep. the Circus Maximus with, it's not, not overly done, nope. but I'm gonna tell you those meeples are really cool. Yes. The, the meeples are- The little chariot meeples. I mean, they're little chariot meeples and they look really nice. I thought that was a very nice production uh, element. I wish they would have found a way to do the, the map, the lane marker or the, the, lap, the lap marker, marker like they did in the movie, like tipping the fish. Now they have the little fishies there, but it it's a block that you flip over. It's fine, it works. But those meeples are really nice. The production value, as would be expected from a yeah. GMT game, um, very good. I also like that it's a smaller box. You know, it's not a a full, I mean, it's a, it's a three inch box, right? Is this right? a Fort Sumter box? Uh, actually, that might be a very good comparison. A L little bit bigger. It probably could have been, but that map was pretty big. Yeah, the, the map the map is the main reason. Yeah. It has a lot of cards in it, too. I, I don't know. Just simple fun. I had a good time with it. There's some randomness. There's some laugh-out-loud moments. Yeah. And, and But there's strategy to it. It's not just a throw my dice, play my cards. You're you're having to plan and think ahead. Yeah, I've I, this is, like you said, this will go to conventions with us. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of... Because you sit... It's late. You've played a big war game all day. You don't you, have the mental capacity to play no. another big, big game. But we can all do colors and numbers. And yeah. you just add it up, and you and it's like running around. Everyone's yeah. Everyone's whipping to get that advance, or everyone's attacking each other, yep. and you, it's it's really really just it's just fun, and it's so easy to learn, and the rules are so simple yeah. that you're just like immediately having enjoying it rather than yep. like oh how do we play this? You don't have that. In this. No, the management of the damage is also kind of fun. You. You know, you have to be careful with that because every damage cube you have in your damage box, you're going to reduce one movement. And I'm telling you, you get three or four there, you're hosed. So it gets you've very got, bad. You've got to get those out of the way. And, and, that's, the, and that's the glory of having more players is that you'll have yeah, more attacks. More, yep. You'll need to do more recoveries. Yep. And, it's, and it's just tighter from that yeah. standpoint as well. So that damage concept is, is akin to like in uh, Thunder Alley. Yes. Having to change tires or, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, if it sort yourself out. So, lots of cool things here. I've I've watched a couple of videos from some people that we follow and talk to on Twitter. I think universally, everybody really enjoyed this game. I had a blast with it. it it's just a lark, right? I, I think it's a fun time. Doesn't take itself too seriously. Nope. Doesn't not try not to be to. something that it's not. Exactly. You're going around in a circle, you gotta keep turning left, you got, and, and that's what you're doing, yes. right? You never went back. I don't think there was ever any no, situation that not, you ever go not, backwards. A, not a way to do that. 
Um, so it, it's pretty simple, fast playing, lots of unique elements to it. Had a great time. And we don't play a lot of games like this. No. Um, but, kind of, but when we do, I always enjoy them because oh, yeah. it's a breath of fresh air and yep. it's great to stick on the end of something that we've a yeah. little bit more intense, right? I think the night that we played this, we ended up playing another deck building game that we didn't enjoy as much. Uh, Firefly, Misbehaving. Yeah. I was disappointed with that, but this really set a good tone for the evening. I remember thinking, oh, I'd almost rather just play yeah. that again. <laughs> we, I, I kind of wish we had Because well. we had such a good time <laughs> with it. Um, I still want to play it with Brum. Uh, and, and once, you, like you said, take it to a convention, yeah. play a six-player game, and just see how that changes it. So... But yeah, Charioteer from GMT Games. Check this out if it's something that you're interested in. Really nice, beautiful game. Have a blast. Get six people together. You'll have a good time racing in Rome. I appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.